Hey guys, in today's video, I want to discuss two common surf problems, which are a shallow racket drop and a racket drop leak. But interestingly, these two problems are related to each other. So let me break it down for you in this way. What you often see at the beginner recreational level is no racket drop at all. So players might be starting out with a good trophy position or trophy phase and the racket simply doesn't drop. It just goes to about right here before they approach the ball. Now at the more intermediate recreational level and even some advanced recreational players have a shallow racket drop. What that means is the following. The racket will drop but it will not go very deep. What you will see at the high level is that the tip of the racket goes below the lower back area. That is a optimal racket drop on the serve. So some players are in between an optimal racket drop and no racket drop at all somewhere in the middle. They have what's called a shallow racket drop. Now this is a problem because you're not working with the same type of range of motion. You have a shorter runway to the ball, so to speak, and this is something that needs to be corrected. So naturally with a lot of players, especially those that have no racket drop, start doing is start to consciously execute a racket drop by just dropping the racket down and bringing their elbow up. And now they have a full racket drop. However, often the serve doesn't improve much. And the reason why the serve doesn't improve much because they are isolating this movement. In other words, they are thinking about dropping the racket lower and nothing else in the body is happening. And now they suffer from something that's called a racket drop leak. So let me explain to you what a racket drop leak is. There are several parts of the body that are being unloaded when the racket begins to drop. For example, there's a cartwheel movement on the serve where we toss the ball up and now the non-dominant side is above the dominant side. And as the racket starts to drop, this starts getting reversed so that the dominant starts start going up and this is just like a cartwheel on the serve. I made a separate video about the cartwheel that you can check out. Also, the body might be loaded in uh, several different ways. Some players will bend the body forward. Some players will bend the body backward. Some players will bend the body forward and backward. All players will bend their legs as well and get on their toes as they're loading their serve. So this entire system has to be unloaded when that racket begins to drop. So in other words, that non-dominant arm is going to start going down, the legs are starting to straighten, the torso is going to start to straighten, and the entire system is being unloaded. So what happens to those players that have no racket drop at all or even a shallow racket drop, when they consciously think about dropping the racket, they're likely doing this in isolation. So they are going down first with the racket without unloading the body. And now when they begin to unload the body, they do this way too late and they end up with a severe racket drop leak. Now, a racket drop leak is something that you will find even at the elite level, especially on the WTA Tour. It is very rare to find an ATP player with a racket drop leak. And there are different degrees of a racket drop leak. So if you start going down into the racket drop just slightly and you accelerate from somewhere around here, this is not as bad of a problem as if you go all the way down with your racket and you're accelerating from way down here. The later you unload, the lower the racket drops, the less range of motion you have to work with in your acceleration phase. So for that reason, a racket drop leak that's severe is a big problem on the serve. So if you are someone who has a shallow racket drop or no racket drop at all, and you are working on dropping that light racket lower and you're doing so in isolation and you have created a big racket drop leak as a result of it, here is what you have to do. You're going to have to work on the timing in the unloading phase. And a very good way to do so is with a progression where you start in the trophy phase. You bend your knees. You're going to try to bend forward and backward as much as it's comfortable for you. You're going to toss the ball up. And you're going to try to unload your body simultaneously with the racket dropping down. Now, the reason why this progression is helpful is because you don't have to worry about the take up portion. So the timing is more simplified. You can just freeze the racket here, load your body, toss the ball up and then unload everything simultaneously. So if you do enough of 
these progressions, let's say 50 to 100, and then you go into a normal service motion, there's a likelihood that your timing is gonna improve relating to the racket drop and the rest of the body. Now here are the bad news. What happens to a lot of players is that as soon as they stop thinking about the racket drop and they start unloading everything simultaneously, that old shallow racket drop might come back because that part of the serve is taking place intuitively. The players are not aware how low the racket is dropping. So it is very likely that when you slow mo your serve and you're going through these progressions that I'm showing you, that indeed the racket shallows out just like it did before you started dropping the racket in isolation. So if that's the case, I don't want you to worry. I want you to continue with these progressions because in my experience, the more you accelerate, the more you use your body correctly with the proper timing, all these things help the length of the racket drop. So let's get into the biomechanics of how the racket actually drops. In the trophy phase, we're gonna see a lot of different styles, but let's assume that a player has the elbow slightly behind the torso. So as the racket begins to drop, the elbow starts going up and out. So in essence, it's the elbow going up that makes the hand and the racket go down. Now, of course, the hitting side of the body is connected to the non-hitting side of your body. So if you're doing some mistakes with your non-hitting side, for example, if you're dropping that toss arm too quickly, this will bring the hitting side up too quickly and this will shallow out your racket drop. So this is a common mistake that I see on players that drop that toss arm a little too quick, brings the right side up too early, and now naturally the racket drop shallows out. So it's very important that the tempo of the non-dominant side matches the tempo of the dominant side. So again, it's important that you use your body to help the arm out. Not only will this make the serve feel more effortless, but in fact, if you time the unloading portion of your serve correctly, it might help with the length of the racket drop. Now for you guys that have a chronic shallow racket drop, something that you always done, there are also progressions that you can do to start lengthening it. And here's one progression that can help. So we're gonna bypass this portion of the racket drop where the elbow goes up and out, and we're gonna start with the elbow already out. So the elbow is gonna be on the hitting side of your body, and the tip of the racket is gonna be below your lower back. You can check this by hitting yourself very gently on your back. And you're gonna to toss the ball up, and from here, you're gonna accelerate and make contact. If you do 50 to 100 progressions, there's a chance that when you step up and do your normal serve, that the length of your racket drop is going to increase. If it doesn't, you just continue with the progressions day after day until you start seeing differences.